So kicking it off with NCAA Women's Top 25 Final Four uh, tournament game, semifinals. We had the first game of the day. We had the Lady Wolf Packs going up against the um, Game Cox of the Lady Game Cox of South Carolina. The Lady Game Cox end up dominating uh, number three NC State. So number one South Carolina def- defeated uh, number three NC State Lady Wolf Packs, seventy eight to fifty nine. Um, honestly, I thought the Lady Wolf Packs played with good heart. Um, they had good intensity. Uh, me personally, I think they lost the game because they made more mistakes than, than South Carolina did. They actually started the game off with uh, making South Carolina turn the ball over, and they didn't capitalize. And, and I thought that was kind of a good and bad sign for the Lady Wolf Packs because, again, they started with good defense and tempo. But then uh, South Carolina settled in. They started to get their, their center involved, and she started to really dominate them and, and break break down their defense. They was kind of they were trying to run like a zone, like a man zone type of vibe in that first first two quarters, and they they made some adjustments, but you know it wasn't enough to to defeat you know South Carolina. Um, and 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 you know just even speaking about South Carolina and Don Staley, she's the first coach to win the Naismith Player of the Year and the Naismith Coach of the Year awards. So. Um, that just speaks value in itself to win two player of the year awards and then four Nate Smith coach of the year awards is truly, you know, special. And then to have a record, I think it was like South Carolina girls lost like three games in the last three years. So like just truly an un- unbelievable, uh, resume that they have at, at South Carolina. And this is what I predicted. I predicted, um, that Iowa and South Carolina will meet up in the championship. Those, those, those were, those were, those were my favorites to be. Those were my betting favorites for Vegas. Uh, when I when it's kicked off a, when it's kicked off a couple weeks ago, that's who I was. Uh, that's who I was predicting who will, who will meet up, and that's what we're gonna have. So I'm excited for that. Um, and that moves me over to the Iowa UConn game. We had number one Iowa defeat number three UConn, 71 to 69. I actually didn't get a chance to catch this game, uh, but they, I saw the controversial screen call at the end of the game, which you know people can point out one crucial moment at the game where even like, yeah, the whole game has happened. It might've been calls that weren't called earlier, calls that were called earlier, but people, people look past it because, oh, it was more time. It was more time. But when calls happen like that at, at, at such a critical point in the game and they're and the game is about to be over with when there's no more time to look past that foul, that's when those things really get telescoped. And um, I just think um, as always, it's hard to, officiate any sport and try to get it right you know it's, it's so fast and live pace and action um but you know in moments like that i just think it should be a rule um uh, amongst kind of like in hockey like no blood no foul type of rule not 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 if it's blatant but like if it's like kind of in the air between if it's a foul or not i think it's just you should just let them play you know just even back towards the super bowl a couple years back when the eagles lost to the chiefs you know, I'm pretty sure the hold, a lot of holding, a lot of all that other stuff going on. But, you know, we end up losing. I'm not making an excuse. But, again, that was a big call at that moment where we our defense had ended up making a stop and they got bailed out by a call that could have been, you know, overlooked or whatever. Not overlooked, but, like I said, it was just microscoped in that big in that moment, whatever. But that's, that's neither here nor there. Like I said, I'm excited uh, for the championship game this weekend um, on Sunday at 3 p.m. on ABC for the number one showdown. Uh, number one, Iowa going to against number one, South Carolina. Um, for all the marbles, all the chips, the, the NCAA Women's National Championship game, and that game can be seen at 3 p.m. on ABC or ESPN tomorrow afternoon at 3 p.m. again. So make sure y'all tune into that. It's going to be a, a heck of a ride. Two prestigious programs, two great coaches going head-to-head. I'm looking forward to it. But before we get to that, uh, we have the NCAA Final Four semifinal games for the men's um, tonight at 6.09 p.m. on TBS. We have number one Purdue hosting number 11 NC State again at 6.09 p.m. on TBS. I'm definitely uh, pulling for the Wolfpack. Then followed by that game at 8.49 p.m. on TBS. We have number one UConn hosting number four Alabama on TBS at 8.49 p.m. And then Monday games will be the national championship game for the uh, NCAA Tournament's Final Four men's game. So make sure y'all tune in 
to the Thursday Sports Huddle. Um, be on the lookout. Follow these two games from today from the men's and be on the lookout to see who 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 gonna play on Monday. And then y'all can tune into the Thursday Sports Huddle to get updated information from NCAA Final Four men's and women's. So good luck to everybody. Um, go out there, give it your best. Play hard, play smart, be physical, and good luck to everybody. Hey, what's good, Grateful Gal family? Welcome into the Grateful Gal podcast. Y'all know what time it is. It's a sports huddle. About to get directly into the daily verse before I get into the sports huddle rundown. Daily verse for the date of April 6, 2024. It arises from the book of Proverbs, chapter 13, verse 20, and it states as follows. The one walking with the wise will become wise, but the one who has dealings with the stupid will fare badly. Amen. And again, that's from the book of Proverbs, chapter 13, verse 20. And this morning, ladies and gentlemen, for the Grateful Gas Sports Huddle, I'll be going over the NCAA Men's and Women's Final Four. Uh, the NCAA Women's Final Four Championship game is set. I'll be recapping uh, the Final Four semifinal games. Then I'll be looking ahead to preview the Final Four semifinal games for today and then looking ahead to the championship game. Um, also, NCAA Baseball Top 25, Major League Baseball, National Hockey League, United Football League, NFL News, NBA regular season, and I'll be having upcoming events. So make sure y'all stay tuned for the whole show to get information as follows. NC Baseball Top 25 recap from Thursday. We had number one Arkansas defeat Ole Miss 5-2. Number 18 LSU upset at number seven Vanderbilt 10-6. Number 15 Virginia upset at number 10 North Carolina 14-11. Friday games, we had Florida State defeat Boston. Number 14 Florida State defeat Boston College 12-4. Number two, Clemson defeated Notre Dame, 7-3. Number nine, Duke over Miami, 4-3. Number 15, Virginia defeated number 10, North Carolina, back-to-back -back games, 7-2. We had an upset out of NC State. We had unranked Louisville defeat number 19, NC State, 11-1. Number 20, Coastal Carolina defeated Old Dominion, 9-2. Number 25, UCF defeated Kansas State, 7-4. Number 12, East Carolina defeated FAU 4-1. Number 17, for Saturday games, April 6th, we have number 14, Florida State, going up against Boston College. Number 15, Virginia, looking to sweep number 10, North Carolina. Number 19, NC State, going up against Louisville. Number 24, Nebraska, hosting Ohio State. Number 13, Alabama, going up against number 17, Kentucky. Number 20, Coastal Carolina, hosting Old Dominion. Number one, Arkansas hosting Ole Miss. We have the UFL kicking off later on today at 12 p.m. on ESPN for the week two of the UFL, the United Football League. We will have the Showboats hosting the Brahams at 12 p.m. on ESPN, followed by that game tonight at 8 p.m. on ABC. We will have the Battle Hawks hosting the Renegades on Sunday games. Sunday games. The Panthers will be hosting the Stallions at 12 p.m. on ESPN. And then the Defenders will be hosting the Roughnecks at 4 p.m. tomorrow afternoon on Fox. So make sure y'all tune in to the United Football League. Give, give them some, some support and um, just get some good football action in. I'm, I'm going to have to start checking it out more myself. Moving on to NFL news, only major NFL news I have um that came down the came down the pipeline uh, for information was that the Houston Texans are um looking to give Stefan Diggs the free agency um availability like they're there. I mean let me rephrase it a different way. The Houston Texans had traded for the for Stefan Diggs. Um, but they are not offering Stefan Diggs a long-term contract. They are playing him on his one-year deal. I guess the rest of the contract he had with the, um, with Buffalo, the Texans are going to pay him for the rest of that contract, that one year he had. And then the 25-26 year season, he will be a free agent. So the Texans are letting Stefan Diggs basically walk after his only season 
with the Texans this upcoming year. So that's the only basically NFL news I have um, at the moment. So stay tuned. Again, as we continue to get closer and closer to the NFL draft and um, also be on the lookout for the uh, WNBA draft, which is going to be on April 15th, <clears throat> which is going to be a Monday, uh, which is going to be on April 15th. But what, what, what I would do is I'm going to plan on having the uh, the WNBA draft still recorded and I'm going to add it to the show to the sports huddle on that uh, on that following Thursday because the 15th is a Monday so I'm going to have the sports huddle draft episode attached to the to the Thursday sports huddle on that following week on that same week excuse me so um, be on the lookout for that also I'm excited for that um, you know, just being able to see these girls play the last couple of days. Um, and, and a lot of these women are going to go, you know, top five picks in the, in, in, this, in this upcoming draft. So I'm truly excited just to see um, the, 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 the growth and the development of the WNBA and just women's basketball in general. So I'm, I'm excited for it. And to wrap up the sports huddle, I'll be going over NBA, um, NBA recap from Thursday games. April 4th, we had the Mavericks defeat the Hawks, 109-95. The 76ers over the Heat, 109-105. The Kings defeated the Knicks, 120-109. The Warriors defeated the Rockets, 133-110. And the Clippers defeated the Nuggets, 102-100. Friday games, April 5th, we had the Hornets over the Magic, 124-115. The Pacers over the Thunder, 126-112. The Trail Blazers over the Wizards, 108 to 102. The Celtics over the Kings, 101 to 100. The Bulls defeated the Knicks, 108 to 100. The Heat defeated the Rockets, 119 to 104. The Grizzlies over the Pistons, 108 to 90. The Raptors defeated the Bucks, 117 to 111. The Spurs defeated the Pelicans, 111 to 109. We had the Mavericks defeat the Warriors, 108 to 106. The Suns defeated the Timberwolves, 97 to 87. And the Clippers dominated the Jazz 131-102. For today's games, kicking off at 3.30 p.m., we have the Lakers hosting the Cavaliers, the Nets hosting the Pistons, the Nuggets hosting the Hawks, and the Grizzlies hosting the 76ers. For Sunday games, April 7th, kicking off tomorrow at 3.30 p.m. on NBA TV, we have the Mavericks hosting the Rockets, the Clippers hosting the Cavaliers, the Heat going up against the Pistons, the Celtics hosting the Trailblazers. The Thunder going up against the Hornets. The Magic versus the Bulls. The Wizards going up against the Raptors. The Suns hosting the Pelicans. The Bucks hosting the Knicks. The 76ers going up against the Spurs. Um, also, that Bucks versus Knicks game will be on NBA TV on Sunday night at 7 p.m. Then we have the Nets hosting the Kings. The Jazz going up against the Warriors. And the late night game at 10 p.m. on NBA TV. For Sunday, February, not February, for Sunday, April 7th, um, will be the Lakers hosting the Timberwolves. So, I'm um, grateful, God, family. That's all I have for y'all. Appreciate all y'all love and support. Um, other more other more news um, that I've been getting more for college basketball. Also, I meant, meant to mention this earlier when I was speaking about NCAA um, men's and women's basketball. Bronny James is declared for the NBA draft. Also, he's declared for the transfer portal. I know I mentioned the transfer uh, transfer portal on Thursday. But um, since then, he has sent more information about him entering the uh, potentially, well, not potentially entering the NBA draft, but entering the NBA draft and potentially being drafted based on evaluation reports as, I'm, as I've been reading and as I've heard. So, um, again, other than that, though, like I said, that's it. Y'all be, be blessed, be loved, have a great today. Um, give Jehovah glory for today, and let's make the best of it. Y'all be blessed, be safe. I love y'all. Until next time, peace.